Hello my dear friends, my name is Cerrito. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I have a Kringle candle for you today. It is kind of a summery candle. Actually, I think it's an all season candle. The candle in question is Somerset and it is in the country candle line currently, which right now is paraffin wax still, and this is paraffin, um, but I think it will probably be going through a repour very soon and come back in 100% soy. So the good news for you right now though is that this candle is 50% off on the website and so you can get it for fairly cheap in the paraffin. They're trying to pour, um, uh, go through them. So uh, I think that this, this is a large one. Um, it is... 24 ounces the 24 ounce I think is going for like $14 and maybe some change and then you can get it in the medium as well which I think is like 12 and some change and then they have it available in the wax melts and also in the daylight and I think all of those are 50% off so this is a really good time to try it and summer is a good time to try it as well Although, as I said before, I really think this is a very all season candle. I really like Somerset a great deal, although it has the dubious distinction <clears throat> of being, I think, the only candle of Kringles that I have ever seen Brett from Philly Candleman hate on. <laughs> if you know Brett from Philly Candle, um, he is like not a person to hate on anything. He's a very soft-spoken, mild kind of personality. Um, and sometimes I would love for him to express his opinion, positive or negative, a little bit more demonstratively. But it always makes me laugh because this is the only candle. He's talked about it several times and he can barely get the introduction out before he's like, not for me. Not for me. This candle is not for me. <laughs> Which is his way of saying, absolutely not. Thank you, next. Um, I really love it, though. And, you know, Brett has just reminded me, though, that, you know, every candle can be polarizing. You know, it will have its audience, and then there will be a lot of other people who just really don't like it. And obviously, some fragrances are more polarizing than others. I actually don't think this one is terribly polarizing. Um, I would consider it to be fairly inoffensive, but it does have a ton of musk, amber, and sandalwood in it. It has a very powdery finish. And um, Sean from Hearthside <laughs> literally can't stand anything amber and sandalwood like he goes into orbit. So maybe amber and sandalwood are like polarizing, I don't know. For me personally, I think they're fairly inoffensive. And as you know, if you watch my channel, I will go a long mile for an amber and sandalwood candle. Um, Somerset, I didn't even look it up. Now Somerset is a place in England and maybe New England, although it's spelled with an O, S-O-M-M. -M. Um, I don't know if the New England one is S-U-M, but there may just be kind of a play on that, like Somerset, but they've spelled it like summer as in the season to indicate that it's like a, a summery kind of burn. Um, and it's this like teal color. As you can see, I have quite a lot of discoloration here um, in the paraffin, which I don't always see in the paraffin, but this one is like pretty obvious and I don't love that. Um, I think it may be branded as a spring and summer scent. And the the aquatic nature of this wax, for me, it it I thought I I anticipate it being an aquatic fragrance, but it's really not. Um, in fact, I wonder if maybe a rebrand would be good for it. Not that I don't love the marketing of Somerset with the blue wax. I just think it's lovely and stunning. But the fragrance itself is not blue to me, if that makes any sense. 
It is, it's got a lot of amber and sandalwood and musk, and then it has a lot of floral, and then it has a lot of fruit. And so I'm thinking like maybe something more warm colored would be more appropriate for this. And I don't know, maybe get a different kind of audience. All right, so I'm getting ahead of myself. The blurb on the website for Somerset says, quote, ultimate combination of sweet pear, smoky sandalwood, amber, and creamy vanilla. And then more formally, the top notes are pear, kumquat peel, pomelo, and bergamot. So that's three citrus notes in the top competing against that pear. So take note of that. Mid notes, red fruit, berry, peach, apricot, jasmine, gardenia, peonies, base, musk, sandalwood, amber, and vanilla, all of the usual suspects. So this is a really interesting candle in that they want to call out the pear against the smoky sandalwood, amber, and creamy vanilla. And frankly, just those scent notes just sound really amazing to me. I would love a more pared down, no pun intended, a pared down, like, authentic, like acoustic, as it were, an acoustic performance of like pear with the sandalwood, amber, and vanilla. Um, and maybe it would need a little something else, but I just think that would be an amazing, like super pear forward kind of candle, but have that like creamy, smoky element at the same time. I just think that would be really amazing. As it is, Yes, there may be some pear in this, but it's not a pear forward candle. And as you can tell, there is a lot going on here. It's almost as if there's like three different candles in these scent notes. And I have to say that they're going, they're coming together in the, very nicely. And there is a great deal of cohesion, which is impressive given how much they've got here and how many different genres of candles they've kind of sliced into one. So you definitely have the musk, sandalwood, amber, and vanilla issue. Then you have like a strong range of white florals, jasmine, gardenia, and peonies, which make a lot of sense with like the apricot and peach. Again, another really interesting candle would be like that peach apricot with the jasmine, gardenia, peonies, with the musk, sandalwood, amber, and vanilla. So you've got a floral, and then you have those like light stone fruits along with like a creamy base. I feel like that would be an amazing candle too. It would also be an amazing candle to do peach apricot with musk, sandalwood, amber, and vanilla. Oh my gosh, that Aldi candle, apricot and oud. I am obsessed. I don't know why I didn't buy a crate of them. That apricot note against something creamy and wood-like, man, that was a knockout combination. So that's another great combination that would go. Then you've got red fruit and berry, which is its own thing. And that's a little bit different than like pear on one side and the light stone fruits on the other. I don't know if that's coming out. And then obviously you have those kumquats, pomelos, and bergamot, and you're getting a lot of that. There is a very strong citrus component to this, but I would say it's a dry citrus rather than a juicy citrus. So think, it says say peel here. Think like peel or something that's like a dried citrus, but it definitely still has that assertive, like, not abrasive, but acidic kind of like pop to it, right? And as we well know, <laughs> bergamot up against musk, sandalwood, etc., goes um, generally men's cologne, but it does have a very like perfumey kind of profile. Anytime you put those like citrus components with something that's like sandalwoody or musky, that automatically creates what we would associate with more of a generic perfume kind of scent. Because of all of the other sweet fruits and sweet florals, this goes in the direction of a woman's perfume as opposed to a man's. And I know they say smoky um, sandalwood, but there's nothing 
very smoky about this at all. Um, it's just very sweet, very sweet. Um, but I really think the musk sandalwood and amber and vanilla are grounding this like really nicely and making sure that it doesn't like fly away into like a sugar assault, basically. The fruits and the florals and yeah, the fruits and the florals of all genres that are in this are very, as I said, very powdery. So there's nothing particularly juicy or fresh about all of those elements. And that's maybe the only thing that I might want to change about this. There are some people who are going to consider this to be too perfumey, too powdery, too like stale, frankly. It's just not, it's not dynamic and it's not fresh in the way that it could be and actually would be very nice. And so that's as close as I'm gonna come of a critique of this particular scent. There were times when I burned it and I thought to myself, I'm just getting a lot of perfume and it's really heavy. And when we get to the performance, the performance on this was actually very modest. Like sometimes I was only getting a five or a six out of it in terms of strength and throw, but it still sometimes seemed a little overpowering. And I think it's because of that perfume nature in it. But then there were other times that I burned it and it was like the vanilla and the sandalwood were coming out like the most prominently and they were just so mellow and warm and soothing and like they just didn't have all of those really sharp perfumey like overtones to them and it was just so beautiful along with those like florals and fruits. I do think they need to be cautious about the citrus with the musk. Like that's, it just has the tendency to go hard perfume or cologne very fast and it can hijack a fragrance no matter what you think of a perfume. This actually reminds me a little bit of um, Mon Amour actually, which is, Mon Amour is more caramely um, and I actually like Mon Amour better. <laughs> Mon Amour, which is apparently a dupe for Baccarat, Rouge, whatever it is, it is a woman's perfume. Um, and this reminds me of it, not necessarily in the fragrance notes themselves, but in the profile of it. So it comes across as a creamy woman's fragrance and kind of the way that Mon Amour does. So if you like Mon Amour, this might be a really good one to check out for that reason. And again, why I think maybe Somerset may not be the marketing direction that is the most, I don't know, appropriate to the scent. I'm not really sure where to go with that. Um, but I really like it. My little sister who was smelling through all my candles and frankly, she has a very narrow range of candles that she liked, most all of them. She was like, oh no. When she got to Somerset, she was like, yes, where do I sign? This is so incredible. So I really do think that there's a person who really, really likes this and maybe a lot of people who like it. It is all season because it's got the floral, because it's got some fruit, because it's got the vanilla, you can almost burn it at any time. There is something a little bit, I think because of the sweetness, there is something very like spring-like about it. And because it's not like completely um, fresh, as in a fresh blooming kind of way, it could almost be a little bit like late winter because of the powdery nature and the like very subdued nature of it. Um, it could go in a season where there are no blooms, i.e. late summer, I mean late winter, definitely spring, definitely summer. Um, you could even do this in the fall, although frankly, there's so many other things that we burn in the fall that it probably would have a hard time competing. It's a super versatile fragrance. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorites from Kringle. In terms of performance, on the paraffin, I did not love this discoloration. That being said, it's had no trouble burning. Like I haven't really had puny wicks on it necessarily, although it's threatened on more than one occasion. Um, it burns up, it pulls up, 
Um, it gives me more soot and more carbon residue than I would like, so I don't love that. If you get it, maybe the medium one would be a better option just because you're gonna burn it for less time than this really large one. Strength and throw. Frankly, it was very inconsistent. I would say for the first few burns, and by first few burns, I mean like three or four, I felt like I was getting a five out of this. And I was not very happy because I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to say this is a favorite if it stays in this five range, right? I'm very happy to say that after the first like four burns, it started really opening up. And so now, it's more on the 7.5 realm. Sometimes it even seems eight, especially in those moments where the perfume nature is coming out. It feels like a little bit heavy, like, like 7.5 or eight is a little too much. Um, and that has to do with the fragrance profile more than anything else. So the range here is about five to 7.5. I really know nothing about the science of these candles, but it's almost as if, and I've had this for quite some time, the scent um, oils settle a little bit, which means that you can burn a good like inch of the wax and get kind of less fragrance. And then as you get lower into it, it starts like really, I don't know, it's it's like a heavier concentration. And maybe it's only for certain scent oils and certain like wax formulas, I don't know. Like really I'm just speaking off the cuff and I'm speaking out of ignorance, but that's the way that it burned for me, is like super light at the beginning, like we weren't getting a whole lot of scent um, oil. And then as we went into the jar, it started really coming out. All right close parentheses. You are probably going to get a good strength and throw on this, but you may have to be a little bit patient. I am, I mean, I have no reason to believe that this won't come back out in the 100% soy formula. Um, it's been around for a really long time, so I think that there's a good audience for it. Um, and so I, I think it'll probably come out in 100% soy. Um, and I'm actually kind of really happy about that because I was not happy with, a lot of the paraffins actually burn quite good and I'm a fan of paraffin, at least the way that Kringle has done it. So I'm not terribly happy it's going away, but there are a few that I have burned that frankly, I think a soy formula would be a good improvement on this one. And I'm kind of hoping that they maybe, as they go to that 100% soy, think about the scent oils that they're using and maybe, bump it up a little bit, um, especially if they're gonna stay with this two wick. I would say it needs to consistently be in that six to seven range. And I think six to seven is the right range for this kind of a fragrance. Um, I think it would probably also be really nice in more than a two wick, like a three wick. I think that would be really kind of cool. I, It's a great candle. It's maybe not in my top five, but I would say it's in my top 10. Yeah, really nice. Highly recommend, check it out, on sale. Even if you just get the wax melt or you get the daylight, you know? I know there are fall candles coming out here very soon. You're gonna be ordering off of Kringle. Pick up one of them. See if this fragrance is for you if you haven't tried it yet. I'll see you in the next one.